algebra has many wonderful applications, particularly in the area of chemistry. And that's what I want to highlight today. So we're just going to work on a combustion problem to examine how algebra can be applied. So combustion. Let's suppose that methane gas reacts completely with O2 gas to form CO2 gas and H2O. The combustion reaction would look something like this. So here you have your methane, CH4, denote the gaseous state that it's in. You add in your oxygen. So it's going to ignite the combustion and that will eventually yield, it's going to yield CO2 gas and water vapor, H2O, also in the gaseous state. So all these molecules and diatomic element are in the gaseous state. These washables fade fairly quickly, so I'm just going to re-highlight the products. There must be more humidity on this side. All right. So the primary constraint that I'm going to present to you is that after this reaction proceeds, the products, that is CO2, gas, and water vapor, pretend they're building up a pressure of 1.2 torr. So the question that I'm posing is, how much of this pressure is attributed to the buildup of water vapor? Figuring out the partial pressure of H2O it's fairly straightforward if you employ a little bit of algebra. But first, prior to doing that, what we're going to do is balance the equation. Now, whenever you balance combustion reactions, you always want to balance the reactant that does not contain oxygen first. So on the reactant side, we have one carbon, one carbon on the product side that's balanced. On the reactant side, we have four hydrogens and only two on the product side. So we're going to add in a two, giving us four hydrogens. Now we have to balance our oxygens. We have two on the reactant side, two here in the carbon dioxide, and two in H2O, well, two in two molecules of H2O. Therefore, we have to put a coefficient of 2. And now our combustion reaction is balanced. Um, the substances on the product side, the writing faded due to the moisture in the air. So just pretend like you can see it. So 1.2 torr is the total pressure built up due to the products. And we balance our equation. So for CO2, you can just pretend that there's a 1. Although convention doesn't necessarily need a 1 in front of it. And we balanced the water, so we ended up with a um, coefficient of 2. OK? So if I want to know what portion of this pressure is due to water vapor buildup, that's really easy. If you think of the whole as being three different substances, one. CO2, and two H2O. So we have a total of three things. But out of those three things, this is where the algebra come in, comes in. Two out of the three are water vapor. So that means that two-thirds of the pressure buildup is going to be due to water vapor. So all we have to do is multiply two-thirds by 1.2 torr.
So some people, if they saw this calculation, or they arrived at this calculation on a test, and they weren't allowed to have or use a calculator, they would get a bit intimidated. But halt, don't get intimidated. What you have to do when approaching an algebraic solution is manipulate. Now, I'm sure you're probably comfortable with two thirds, but what about 1.2? A decimal place and a unit often throws people off. Well, we know that our solution is going to be a tour, or some multitude of a tour. And instead of looking at this 1.2 as 1.2, um, erase the decimal in your mind and look at it as 12. So 2 times 12 would be 24. And we know the rule for multiplication is however many decimal places are in now, we just bring our 3. And we know that 24 divided by 3 is 8. So, eight tours so far, but we have to include the decimal place. So, because we have our decimal places shifted one space to the left in our, multipli in our multiplier, we also have to um, do that in the product. And so, our answer would be 0 0.8 or 0.8 tour.